Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Once again, welcome to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. In my previous lecture, I was discussing about uh, molecular orbital theory and its utility in explaining bonding in simple diatomic molecules such as H2 to uh, second row P block elements. I told you about uh, how one can use MO diagrams to explain uh, bond strength and bond distance and all those things by just looking into the number of electrons present in bonding orbitals and number of electrons present in anti-bonding orbitals. So, that will give you some magnitude of bond order based on bond order bond strength and bond enthalpy can be assessed. So, now before I proceed further for heterodiatomic molecules or polyatomic molecules let me write MO diagram for F2 molecule always remember to write arrow to show energy and here 2 p and another 2 p from another fluorine atom. Then we have 2 s, 2 s and then we have 1 s we have 1 s. So, here we will make bonding and anti bonding sigma and sigma star we have 2 electron here 2 electron here. So, this shows the core electrons do not contribute to the bonding. So, because here the bond order is 0 that is the reason most of the cases we ignore uh, the writing MO diagrams for core electrons. Now, it is for ok. So, the again sigma and sigma star again we have 2 electron each ok. So, now what we have is sigma pi pi another sigma. So, that is sigma star here it is pi star and here it is pi and it is sigma. So, now we have here 5 electrons are there 1 2 like this and now another 4 electrons will come here ok. So, now let us look into the bond order this is F atomic orbital and here atomic orbital of F and M O for F 2. Let us look into the bond order because here these are cancelled no point in counting here. So, we shall count here 2 4 6 minus 4 in anti bonding. So, divided by 2 will give you 2 by 2 1. So, between F and F there is a single bond. So, we should be able to write uh, MO diagram and also depict the bond order here. So, we have a single bond between two fluorine atoms in F 2. So, when we write for uh, a heterodiatomic molecule it, uh, that results in the formation of a polar covalent compound. In these kind of polar covalent compounds bonding molecular orbitals are closer in energy to the atomic orbitals of the more electronegative atom and also the anti bonding molecular orbitals, orbitals will be closer to the energy of atomic orbitals of least electronegative atom. For example, I am taking uh, uh, two atoms of the same element then if you take this one whether you consider bonding or anti bonding molecular orbital they are at equidistant from both the 
energy of both atomic orbitals in their free state or isolated state. But if I take something like this, one with low electronegativity, higher in energy and other one with more electronegativity, lower in energy. So, when they are combined, obviously when we generate molecular orbitals, the bonding molecular orbital will be closer to the one which is more electronegative and obviously another antibonding molecular orbital will be closer to the atomic orbitals of least electronegative atom, something like this. For example, if I consider one here, okay, less electronegative, another one is more electronegative atomic orbital and here atomic orbital and if I constitute uh, molecular orbital something like this. So, this is the bonding molecular orbital and this is anti bonding anti bonding molecular orbital. So, here you can see this one will be much closer to the energy of isolated atomic orbitals having least electronegativity. So, this one should remember always when we write uh, a diatomic molecule or for a covalent compound, we should consider the electronegativity and accordingly we should write their energy. Uh, so, that is the reason I am telling you we should be extremely careful in always mentioning this arrow and that mentions about that indicates the energy of the orbitals. Now, let me consider one such uh, molecule that is NO, we have N and O, N is little less electronegative compared to oxygen. Let us let me write the MO diagram. So, here I am considering 2 p atomic orbital of nitrogen and little lower in energy. to be atomic orbital of oxygen and then I am considering here 2 s, 2 s. So, this will give so this sigma and sigma star of 2 s is completed. So, now first what we have is here pi 2 p and then we have sigma 2 p and then we have pi star 2 p and sigma star 2 p. So, now we have here 3 electrons 2 s to 2 p 3, here we have 2 s to 2 p 4. So, like this now we have to arrange these 7 electrons. So, these 2 are filled, these 2 are filled. Okay, so, we have one electron that comes here, it comes to the pi star okay, antibonding orbital. So, let us look into this is M O for N O. Let us look into the bond order, bond order equals we have 6 electrons here and 1 electron here. So, this is 2.5. Okay, so, bond order of N O is 2.5 that is the reason N O has a tendency to lose the lone electron present in antibonding orbital to get extra stability. Once if you remove that one it becomes NO plus, when it is NO plus we do not have any electron in, uh, this is for NO. Similarly, if you remove this electron, so it will be NO plus, NO plus will be 6 by 2, it will be 3. So, NO bond is getting stabilized, that is the reason uh, this NO ligand has a tendency to act as a cationic ligand by eliminating the electron present in the antibonding orbital. That means, uh, about the character, about the reactivity 
and properties of molecules can be predicted simply by writing MO diagram and looking into the electronic arrangement in the bonding and antibonding orbitals. Okay. So, this uh, uh, diagram what I have shown shows the relative energy of various atomic orbitals and when they form diatomic molecules especially I have given here for second row uh, elements, uh, how that is changing gradually you can see as we move from left to the right of the periodic table electronegativity is steadily increasing. As a result what happens are electrons are coming more and more close to the nucleus because of the increased effective nuclear charge. As a result what happens the shells in which the electrons are present are also orbitals are also pulled more closer towards the nucleus. In this context what happens the energy steadily drops you can see here uh, from starting from lithium to neon energy steadily dropping at N2 it crashes here. Okay. You can see here this uh, uh, sigma will be lower in energy compared to 2 that is Pz will be lower in energy and then this will be in higher in energy. This is what exactly happens that is the reason I wrote two different diagrams for molecules up to nitrogen and nitrogen onwards oxygen, fluorine and neon uh, the trend changes the sigma uh, p will be sigma 2 p will be lower in energy compared to pi 2 p. So, this one should remember and also this diagram is there in most of the textbooks you can just have a look at it. Okay. So, uh, in this one just have shown here uh, as the electronegativity increases as the orbitals come more and more towards the nucleus there is a possibility of mixing of atomic orbitals even before the molecules being formed. So, here without mixing MO pattern occurs as expected here I have shown MO diagram with mixing without mixing the first one is here uh, without mixing you can see here without mixing is similar to what I wrote for several molecules in my last lectures. And also here due to the mixing basically what happens the sp mixing occurs the orbital shift is shown here. So, sigma orbital will be higher in energy than the pi p orbitals as a result you can come across some sort of mixing and, and uh, more refined molecular orbitals in fact show mixing of s as well as pz while the formation of sigma uh, orbital and also similarly. Uh, px, py do not mix with uh, s orbital. So, I will show you some more uh, MO diagrams where we can visualize how this mixing occurs prior to the formation of molecular orbitals. With this, uh, so let me write MO diagram for water molecule. So, in water uh, we have two hydrogens having one s electron each will be combining with oxygen to form 2 OH bonds from VACPR theory as well as valence bond theory we know the fact that oxygen in water is tetrahedral with 2 lone pairs and 2 bonded pairs and the shape of uh, water molecule is bent or V shape. Okay. So, here I am considering 2 p orbitals of uh, oxygen and then here uh, I am considering 2 s orbital. Here ligand group orbital we are considering and here 1 and another one here and of course, here we call this H 2 bonding and H 2 anti bonding. Okay. Uh, so, this is with A 1 symmetry, this is with uh, B 2 symmetry and these are all called Mulliken symbols at present you may not be familiar with uh, uh, what is A 1, what is B 2, how these Mulliken symbols are given. Uh, for that one, one should have the knowledge of group theory perhaps when you study group theory 
and when you go for uh, understanding the spectroscopy features of coordination compounds, I am sure you will understand uh, Mulliken symbols. Right now I am not going to dig deep into the Mulliken symbols, simply you should remember here uh, we have Mulliken symbols for this one, this is for bonding H2, we have A1 and anti-bonding we have B2. Okay. And now we are considering of course here we have 2 p x, 2 p y and 2 p z. So, for this also 2 p x is called has B 1 symmetry and 2 p y has B 2 symmetry and 2 p z has A 1 symmetry. And of course, here uh, yes always has A 1 symmetry. And now we are considering here we have total of 2 electrons are coming from 2 hydrogen atoms and now we have here. Uh, 6 electrons are coming from oxygen. Okay. So, let me write them here. Okay. So, this is A 1 and this is B 2 and this is A 1. So, this is not there, ignore this one, this is B 1 and this is B 2 and this is A 1, these two are anti-bonding. So, here uh, now I start filling, so total we have to, uh, this is not there. So, what we have is 6 electrons here plus 2, 8 electrons are there. We start fill those thing, 2 electrons are here and 2 are here and 2 more are here and 2 more are here. So, now let me start connecting this one. So, we have to connect now the similar ones A 1, A 1 and so A 1 and of course, here also A 1 is there, it should be connected. Okay. Now, B 1 is there. So, B 2 is from here, you should connect to this one and B 2 is also here, it should be connected. And now, B 1, uh, we do not have any, so it remains as non-bonding. Okay, B 1, the corresponding we do not have, it remains as non-bonding. So, now, B 2 is connected here. and a 1 is connected here and then A 1 is connected here and B 2 is connected here. Okay. So, now let us look into this diagram here. Okay. Uh, this represents these two electrons here and these two electrons represent the presence of two OH bonds and then these two electrons and these two electrons represent the two lone pairs present on oxygen atom in water molecule. For example, if I write something like this, okay, I can simply correlate this one to this one of this bond and this one to one of the other bond and then here we have two lone pairs. Okay. So, one of this one will be represent this lone pair and another one represent this lone pair. So, this is how you can clearly write uh, the MO diagram for even a triatomic molecule like water. Of course, one can also write for polyatomic molecules that I will be considering uh, in, in a few minutes time. Hope you have understood how to write the MO diagram for water molecule. I already discussed it, NO plus has a stronger NO bond because bond order is 3 whereas in simple NO where due to the presence of one electron in the anti-bonding orbital, it has a bond order of 2.5. Now, let us consider another important molecule such as CO. MO for CO molecule, MO diagram for CO molecule. So, here we have carbon and oxygen, oxygen being a more electronegative its energy both 2s and 2p energy will be relatively lower compared to the energy of 2s and 2p. So, we have to keep that in mind always. 
So, here let me write 2 s for C atomic orbitals of carbon and then I write here for 2 p and then uh, at relatively lower level I write for oxygen and also 2 s for oxygen atomic orbitals of oxygen here. And here we have 4 electrons, in this case we have 6 electrons. Okay. So, first uh, there will be, I am showing you the mixing now, both 2s and 2p they mix and just uh, remember uh, which, which orbital uh, 2s is mixing and what is the nature of that bonding, whether it is sigma bonding or pi bonding. So, here let me write relative energies, one here, one here, so here it is uh, sigma called 1 sigma, here 2 sigma and pi 2 p and 3 sigma pi star 2 p and 3 sigma star. So, this is another way of representing. So, now these two has to be connected here and then this also get connected this, uh, this one and this also shows connection with uh, both. Okay. And then this also shows connection with this one. Whereas, this one there is no connection from 2 p because 2 s will not participate in pi bonding. Okay, but 2 s can correspond to this one. Something like this. Let me start writing the electrons here. Okay. And then here 2, 4 and then here we have total 6 electrons. No, now the bond order, this is for MO for CO, I will show you again. So, 2 p we have 2 electrons and 2 p we have 4 electrons, it is little lower in energy and then we have 2 s orbital and 2 s orbital here both have 2 electrons. Now, 2 s has symmetry for sigma, all sigmas interact with 2 s, it is head on uh, end to end overlapping. So, here all are connected whereas, pi does not connect with 2 s. So, it shows only interaction of these 2 p orbitals of carbon as well as oxygen to form. Now, we have total of 4 plus uh, 6, 8 electrons are there, they are filled here, okay. 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay. So, 8 electrons are there. Now, let us look into the bond order 6 minus 0 by 2, this is 3. So, this represents very clearly 3 bonds between carbon and oxygen out of which one is sigma and 2 r pi that can also be seen here. Same information we got from valence bond theory. And also when we look into uh, Lewis dot structure, this is how we wrote initially. So, here you know, the total number of 10 electrons. So, here uh, these two are coming here and these two are coming here in order to give octet for both. So, as a result we had this kind of situation. So, here 
these two lone pairs on carbon makes carbon monoxide a soft Lewis base and, and here uh, you can see triple bond is there same information we are also getting from carbon monoxide uh, MO diagram. Okay. So, in my next lecture, so I would discuss about more interesting molecules such as carbon dioxide and BH3, BF3 and also uh, hexa coordinated sulfur compound sulfur hexafluoride very interesting and also we can make an analogy of the geometry and the structure information we get for SF6 from MO diagram to the what we have predicted it is octahedral geometry from valence bond theory using hybridization concept. Let us consider those two things and whether any difference is there or when a, whether any anomaly is there we shall look into those things in my next lecture. Until then have a present chemistry reading, thank you. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.